Good morning. Welcome to King O Lutheran Church. My name is Jonathan. I am the Minister of Music here. Pastor Carolyn is on a much-deserved vacation. She's on vacation this week and next week. Uh, so today we've got some familiar faces here. Uh, we have Pastor Margaret, who is a retired pastor, who will be presiding over the service. She served at St. Matt's for a number of years. We're blessed to have her with us. And then we also have Nate Irvine, who is our parish administrator um, and is currently going through the call process in the Episcopal Church. And he will be sharing uh, the gospel and a message with us today as well. Um, so, uh, we will begin worship. Uh, our opening hymn is in the dark purple All Creation Sings hymnal. It is number 1097. Uh, if anyone still needs a worship bulletin, we've got some up front. There are some in the back, uh, so those are helpful for the service. Uh, but the dark purple hymnal, 1097, it says All Creation Sings on the front. Yeah, there Nate's got one. Please stand as you're able. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace from the Lord our God and the Spirit of Jesus. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's scripture is from the sixth chapter of Romans. What we're about to hear, we are created completely new through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Therefore, sin cannot weigh us down in hopelessness. We are freed from sin to live a new life. This is God's promise in baptism. Here begins the reading. Should we continue sinning so grace will multiply? Absolutely not. All of us died to sin. How can we still live in it? Or don't you know that all who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried together with him through baptism into his death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too can walk in newness of life. If we were united together in a death like his, we will also be united together in a resurrection like his. This is what we know. The person, that, the person that we used to be was crucified with him in order to get rid of the corpse that had been controlled by sin. 
That way we wouldn't be slave to sins anymore because a person who has died has been freed from sin's power. But if we died with Christ, we have faith that we will also live with him. We know that Christ has been raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. He died to sin once and for all with his death, but he lives for God with his life. In the same way, you should also consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Oh, wait, we got one thing first. Well, I forgot <laughs> to pour the water in the baptismal font, and we can't do communion. You can't cross yourself with the water if you don't have that. So, Lydia, I'm wondering if you could come forward and help pour the water? You may be seated. Uh, yeah. Um, Let's get you a little step. Oh my, this is heavier than I realized. <laughs> mm. I thought I heard someone else come. Oh, he's back there. Tadachi, I think, is back there. <laughs> yeah, you don't know me as well as Pastor Carolyn, do you? All right, Tadachi, you know how to do this, don't you? Yeah? And Lydia, too. Can you help? I'm sorry, Hannah. Can you help pour? Okay. Would you like to pour? There you go. Lots of water. Isn't that wonderful? What do we use that for? For baptism? Do you want to play in it? Do you want to reach in? Hmm? Can you reach the water? No. No? There, I'll just give you a little water and pour it down in your hand. Okay? All right, thank you for, for coming up. All right, now All right, you now can we stand. stand for the gospel <laughs> acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 10. Glory to you, O Lord. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can, be, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. 
Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, good morning, King O Lutheran Church. Uh, it's good to be here in this capacity. Um, as has been mentioned, I'm the parish administrator, so most of the time uh, I'm usually here Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and in the summer it's a little different. So I'm not typically here on a Sunday morning, um, but it's just been, it's been such a treat to get to know all of you, to put names to faces. I know most, well, probably not most, I know a good portion of the names uh, in this room on paper. I recognize a lot of faces. Um, and it's been really great to get to know, uh, to work with the staff, to know Pastor Carolyn, um, to, and also to see just how your church body values wellness. That's been very apparent to me over the last, I don't know how long, it's been eight months or so. Um, not just for yourselves and for this community, but for the neighborhood, that you want wellness to flow everywhere. It's very apparent to me. And uh, sometimes you, you, know, you discuss things so often you're not sure if it's making a difference to other people. I want you to know as someone who's kind of an outsider, um, who doesn't join with you on Sundays, I see it all the time. And so um, it's just been so refreshing. Um, and I just had to mention that out of all of the Sundays that I uh, am here and out of all the gospel readings that I could read, I got to read the one that says, even all the hairs of your head are all counted. Um, I don't know. It's just not as comforting as it used to be, you know? <laughs> like, it, just a year ago, just a year ago. Um, no, I lost my hair a long time ago, actually. Um, and um, the last time I was here, we sat back there, actually close to where Danette is, and I came with my wife. I'm married to Danielle. We've been married for 13 years. And we have a son named Judah. He's six years old. And we came shortly after I was hired here in October. And at that time, we were in, the bit of a trans in a bit of a transition. I still am kind of in a transition. As you heard, I'm in a, in a call process with the Episcopal Church. Um, but I, for about 15 years, worked uh, for the Salvation Army. Uh, a lot of those years was working with teens and young adults. Um, the Salvation Army is its own denomination. It's a church. Um, many people don't know that. Um, it's the church that I was born and raised in, but I was working in Chicago. Um, and then for a couple years, uh, we came up here and I was the chaplain at the Salvation Army's shelter at 7th and Walnut. Um, for, I did that for a couple of years and I, I loved it. It was so great. Um, but we were in a bit of a transition. That was the church that I was born and raised in and served in until 2021 in July. And we don't have time to talk about all the reasons why we left. That's a discussion that I'm happy to have, but not right now. Um, but at that time, my wife gave me one of the best gifts I've ever received. I'm confident that I will, one of the best gifts I ever will receive. We agreed that I would take a sabbatical from ministry um, for, 15, uh, for, for a year. And I got to spend every day uh, with our son Judah. And at the time, he was, uh, it was the summer, and at that, that fall he was going into K-4, uh, and we would drop him off at 7.20 in the morning, super early, um, and then what felt like five minutes later, I would turn around at 10.20 and pick him up, and then I got to spend the rest of that day with him, and I did that for an entire year. And we had so many fun adventures for that time that we got to be together. Um, things like, I, I remember the first time I got to see him swim without any assistance uh, or floaties or anybody helping him. Uh, we were in Marshall High School in the pool. It's like one of the few uh, heated pools in the city. And I think I actually screamed when he started doing it. I yelled and I was like, oh my gosh, and I, my mind was blown that this tiny human was doing this thing on his own. Um, taking him to t-ball for the first time. I love baseball. I played when I was a kid. It was just like a, one of those wonderful moments. Uh, we got to go to Wrigley Field, where, where my, one of my best friends threw out the first pitch at a game, uh, going to the Bucks Parade when they won the championship that summer. All these fun memories and so many other beautiful things uh, that wouldn't make sense to anybody else, but were so beautiful for us. And it was the best job, easily, the best job I have ever had, and I am confident will be the best job I ever have the rest of my life. 
And that year was very uh, revelatory for me and helped me to see things in a new way. Uh, for one, it was revelatory because I was not prepared to see how much of my identity was still kind of tied up in my job. But also, it clarified for me that in this life, I've said this before in a small group here, actually, that in this life, there, I realize there are two things that I care about deeply, and everything else is negotiable. Those two things are having a healthy relationship with my wife and a healthy relationship with my son. Everything, and God, of course, that's like, you know, assumed, hopefully. Everything else for me truly is negotiable. They are truly the most important things in my life, and everything else is on the table. And so when I read today's gospel lesson, there is a large part of me that struggles with it, that bristles at these words from Jesus' own lips. I find it hard to wrap my heart around the possibility of Judah and I being at odds, uh, that we would be set against one another even, let alone that Jesus himself would seemingly encourage it or be the cause of it. Because on the face of it, doesn't it kind of seem like Jesus has gone maybe a bit too far? <laughs> doesn't it seem like he's calling for a sword fight at the next family function? <laughs> uh, is he encouraging us to actively seek out conflict at every opportunity because he didn't come to bring peace? Are Christians supposed to be known not for their love, but for their ability to break up families? That doesn't seem to, to make sense. What gives? Just like in every scripture, context really matters. And if we were to back up to the tail end of last week's gospel reading, we'll see that Jesus was sending out his disciples to do ministry, to go out into the world and to do what he was doing, and he was giving them instructions. And these are those instructions included in that. And so the first thing to remember simply is that we are a sent people. That what happens here, while it's beautiful and it's good and is necessary, doesn't stay here. That we are invited to join him in this sent mission to spread his love to the world. So Jesus isn't telling us to go out looking for a fight. But what he is doing, though, is giving words of wisdom and comfort to those who have found themselves in conflict as they have been sent. It's to say that as they found themselves in conflict, tension, and separation, as the result of sharing the good news of God's love with the world. There's a major difference there. That is to say that as we go out and partner with God in making all things new, as life-giving as that is, we will face conflict. And the first thing that Jesus tells us is that if we want to know how it might go for us from time to time, if we want some insight into what spreading the kingdom might be like, we only need to consider what it was like for him. First, he says if, if he was called names, we might be called names too. If religious authorities thought he went too far, was too loving, too inclusive, had too much compassion, pushed and opened the boundaries of God's love too widely, people will likely think the same of us. And let's consider how this path of unbounded love ultimately unfolded for him. Isn't it sad that Love incarnate, who came not to condemn the world, but came to love the world to life, who was so serious about love for everyone, who went to the very edges of society so that everyone, everyone, everyone would know God's love for them, that he loved people so much that it made them angry. So angry that it led to his own execution. And Jesus is kind of saying to us this morning, this is sort of what the path looks like. The path of being sent out, the journey of being sent out might kind of look like this, might kind of go like this sometimes. So part of the challenge this morning is just to consider for a moment the very path Jesus is asking us to walk. 
And so when we're on this path of following Jesus and being sent out, we've considered and we've considered what may happen from time to time. Jesus encourages us, though, to use our voice, to speak up, to stand up for what is right, to scream it, not even to whisper it, but to scream it, to shout it from the housetops, to say the thing, to speak the truth, stand with the marginalized and the oppressed. Perhaps some of us need to be encouraged in whatever our contexts are to say the thing we've been keeping inside or to not bite our tongue, but to open our mouths. Some of us don't have that problem, so that's good. But some of us might need to be encouraged in that way. To have those tough and uncomfortable conversations or to do the things that take courage and strength. And the thing is, sometimes it's not just about the tough conversations we have with friends or having those awkward discussions at family get-togethers. Because the reality, the reality is some of us wish it was just an awkward conversation at Thanksgiving or a heated discussion at Christmas that afterwards the family just somehow moves on together. Some would do anything to be able to still talk to a brother, a sister, a sibling, a parent, a grandparent. Because for some, speaking up for the things that Jesus lived and died for has cost them those very relationships. Some have been cut off and disconnected from their families for living authentically. For some of us, there is real and palpable grief in these words. And so here, Jesus tries to speak as caringly and compassionately as he can, and reminds us just how precious and beloved we are, and says that he understands. That doesn't replace the relationships that we lost or undo the tension in the relationships that we have, but it means he understands and has deep, deep empathy with us. And in the loss and the heartache, we find the closeness of the Spirit. And as cliche as it may sound, Maybe part of the challenge this morning is to allow ourselves to believe and trust, actually believe and actually trust that Jesus really does know the intimate details of our lives and to trust that he will take care of us in the tension and the separation. And as much as we don't want to be a son estranged from his father or a daughter unable to be her true self with their mother, or siblings who don't see eye to eye at all about anything, or a household cut off from one another, we might also want to consider what lies on the other side of conflict. Because to see conflict as only a negative thing would actually be unhealthy. For some, uh, far from simply outright encouraging conflict at every turn and for any reason, Maybe part of the challenge this morning is to consider how conflict might actually be the healthiest and most life-giving option for us and for those we love. As a Presbyterian minister, Melissa Tidwell asks, in what ways can conflict be a positive experience that allows all sides to be transformed? Because to view conflict as something that is purely painful is to ignore the possibility that on the other side of such strife is life itself. This may be why Jesus ends this section with such an upside-down, paradoxical, confusing statement. Maybe this is part of what it means to lose our life in order to find it. Because maybe, just maybe, in order for all of us to find life, we need Jesus to lovingly lead us through rough paths ahead. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, we pray for our world in need. God of grace, prevail upon us with the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection that we are compelled to share the gospel with all the world. God, in your mercy. God of grace, 
Under your watch, not even a sparrow goes unnoticed. Safeguard plant and animal habitats that are threatened by melting glaciers, rising oceans, and receding coastlines. Amplify the voices of those calling for responsible stewardship of the Earth's resources. God, in your mercy. God of grace, rescue your people in nations experiencing conflict or war, especially Ukraine. Thwart the efforts of those who sow chaos and terror and guide those working to bring peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy. God of grace, reassure everyone experiencing poverty, homelessness, food insecurity, unemployment or exploitation that every life has value. Embolden us to raise up your justice. God, in your mercy. God of grace, lift up everyone who feels shunned or excluded on account of their gender, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, national origin, or any other human distinction. Come to the help of the sick and dying. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints whose faithful confession inspired our own discipleship and raise us with them to eternal life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To what else does this congregation pray today? Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join with me now in the Apostles' Creed that's found in the back of your, of your hymnal cover. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Okay, we've got a few things um, on page two. And I think there are also a couple of announcements from the congregation. Um, first of all, if you have a pastoral emergency, uh, Pastor Donna Brown at Village Church will be available uh, to call her. And there's a number in the bulletin. Um, Tim and I will not be in Milwaukee, so that won't work. We're still wandering um, till we get our home. Um, Pastor Paul Eilenfeld, who some of you may know because he was an interim pastor here some years ago, 
Um, he will be uh, leading the service and preaching next week. Um, I want to thank Jackie David, too, for her playing um, today and sitting in for Maria, who is in Sweden, visiting uh, with her husband, visiting their daughter. Um, then there are a couple of things that you can involve, get involved with coming up. Uh, one is conversations on the word. Uh, we are a people of the word, and in July there will be uh, both um, online and in-person meetings uh, to study the Bible. And then in August, you'll see an insert in your bulletin for a study on a book called Sabbath, which I think is a really great book. And um, those will take place at uh, the Hubbard Park uh, Beer Garden. Uh, I think there's four or five of those days. And you can get the book and start reading it at um, Barnes & Noble or uh, Amazon. Then we have Vacation Bible School, just one morning. Um, for children two to eight years old on July 20th, so mark your calendars for that. And then finally, um, we will have outdoor worship and a community picnic probably over here on um, July 23rd so that we can really visit the people that go to uh, the farmer's market and invite them for a, a simple meal. There are a couple of other announcements. Kathy? I'm hosting the coffee hour today, and I uh, have been because I haven't had anybody sign up, but I won't be here next week, so somebody please sign up, and while you're looking at it, kind of look ahead and go, oh, well, six weeks from now I could do it another time. I would really appreciate that, and uh, thanks for signing up. Um, I'd like to invite people to also to sign up for um, helping us with that community picnic on July 23rd. It'll be following outdoor worship where we uh, will be outside and we invite you to bring chairs, but we would need help setting up and just kind of um, being present, welcoming the community as we share um, a meal with our community neighbors. So um, I loved how Nate was talking about we're sent people and what a great opportunity and example for us to be those sent people, to build those healthy relationships within our um, congregation, but also our neighborhood, right? And so um, it takes a, a lot of people to make that happen. So if you can sign up online, um, if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer um, how to help make that possible to sign up. Thank you. And oh. Good morning. I just wanted um, to make an announcement. As most of you are aware, that we're going to be honoring um, Pastor Carolyn on Sunday, August 6th, um, with the celebration of her 20th um, anniversary of her ordination. And I also wanted to give um, the community of Kingo um, an opportunity if, to um, participate if they'd like in um, giving a gift um, to Pastor Carolyn. Um, currently, we're going to um, think our thoughts, uh, something that she would really appreciate is a cross from the community of Kingo, a cross necklace. Um, and then just depending on um, what um, is given, most likely um, the rest will be given as a monetary gift to her. Um, you can give all the usual ways of giving um, through a check, um, just designate on it that it, um, ordination gift so that the counters can um, set it aside appropriately. Um, you can also give online uh, with the ordination celebration through that, or you can give with the text to give. And again, it's ordination, celebration, all one word. Um, there is a flyer in the back um, with that information on. It also has information that for some reason you didn't receive a um, invitation through the mail that has all the information on that. Um, and then there's a second flyer, um, because we'd also like to um, um, honor Pastor Carolyn's um, gracious leadership um, through words of appreciation. And so there's a second flyer in the back um, with those instructions, um, just simply to write down. There's 
um, no, you can do it any way you want. Um, anything that you'd just like to express through your appreciation can be something simple. Um, but uh, we'd like to then put that all together and give that to her as a card um, on that Sunday. And if all of that can be done by um, July 30th, so that we have a chance to put it all together for the August 6th um, celebration. Thank you. And one quick thing to add to that, I don't know if you said this, but this is currently a surprise. So, uh, no, no. no. Had, has she been told? I think she's being told a couple weeks before it. No. But um, I don't think she knows yet. Yes, yeah, so she does currently know about it. It okay. is not a celebration. I stand corrected. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I um, was told at one point it would be a surprise. Yeah, so we were doing all the planning beforehand. So we've been in process of planning this for a while, probably about two months. And we did not want her to be aware of it during the actual planning process. Um, but because she will not be um, doing the sermon on that Sunday, um, uh, uh, she did need to be aware of it so that... <laughs> Um, so last Sunday, before she went on vacation, um, we did uh, let her know. So she, what she is aware of is that we are going to honor her on that Sunday, that it is a celebration for her, um, but that is all that she really, and that she does not need to um, prepare a sermon and preach that Sunday, but that is all that she is aware of for right now. All right, that's good for me to know, too. Thank you. <laughs> sure. I've, I've been keeping the secret, like, so closely. I haven't been able to sleep at night. Okay, and a special thank you to Nate for his preaching. I think you uh, are definitely on the right path. Yes. Please rise for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>